Good morning, folks. We're going to talk about space weather, the U.S. deluge, our galaxy stealing stars, deep earthquakes, and a must-read for earthquake forecasters. Let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the SDO satellite doing a little Tyrone Bigham's impression. Helio viewer steadies these frames nicely, however. It was a calm day indeed, no eruptions and no significant solar flares, just down in B-class range. However, the first sunspot of 2017 worth watching has now come into view. He might be alone, might not fire away, but his umbral magnetic fields are some of the most robust on our star at the moment, so eyes on it. Coming next to the solar wind where the streams are calming nicely. See purple going down. That's the speed. If the next stream doesn't arrive soon, however, we'll be at risk for increased cosmic rays if that KP stays in low territory today. Folks, this is the western U.S. I couldn't possibly show all the flood damage and inundation, but suffice to say, they will love a brief break they get from the rain here soon. It won't last long, however, as another earth spot is rolling in. And to my friends out there, do not, I repeat, do not go try to jump this in your ATVs. I know you. Up next, many of you know this old simulation of the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy coming in contact with the Milky Way. Well now, the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics now confirms that at least some of the furthest out stars in our galaxy do not belong to us, but the Dwarf Galaxy, and we stole them. As interesting as this is, they're simulating dark matter here, so let's take this opportunity for our more electrically-minded viewers to discuss some alternative ideas to dark matter in today's comment section. Up next, the Tongan Trench, one of the subduction zones where deep earthquakes are numerous, and why is that? Because of water. Folks, this is why I had Billy do all those experiments using current to push water. I wanted to simulate exactly what these scientists say is actually happening beneath the ground. I say it's electricity and heat, they say it's heat only. Keep deep earthquakes in mind just one moment as we come to QuakeWatch.net. Now hopefully you've read the breaking update paper, check the stats, but maybe you missed that quick links to our two peer-reviewed papers on sun-triggered earthquakes can be found in the top right of the page. If you didn't know, these were published by Dong Choi's New Concepts in Global Tectonics Journal, ncgt.org, and if you click Issues, the September 2015 issue is where our papers are published, but alas, last night the newest issue was released. And folks, not only are there new blot papers, which absolutely must be understood by those forecasting earthquakes, and as if you needed another reason to show your support for them, the issue makes numerous references to our channel, our work, and folks, even the term that Hook Echo and I tag team to create and describe these deeper earthquakes has gotten its first in-print stage building on the shoulders of Grover, Choi, and Blot, Blot Echo Science is born. Folks, there are only a few spots left and even fewer rooms left at the venue location. They expect to fill up by mid-February. I'm honestly just hoping the tickets last that long for those of you who decide to come last minute. Earthquakes will be one of the major topics there, as if it wasn't already the topic of note in today's news. And website members, you got a deeper look on the topic yesterday that answers the much-asked question of late, why are there so many earthquakes? We've got pressure and radar forecasts, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.